Carmen, but. the last thing you do is blame the victims. My goodness, he, these people were uh, abducted, uh, they were sexually assaulted, uh, they were tied up, they were beaten, and they were set on fire. To, to somehow try to blame them is unconscionable. I agree with you, Greg. There's no blame on the victims in this case. I mean, I operate under the foundation that, you know, your, your home is your castle. As you know, my husband is a judge. I myself am running for a judicial position in Nassau, and we have two children. My home is the sanctity where you pray that everything is, is safe. And uh, maybe things would have turned out different if we concentrated on the fact that he was previously on parole. There were uh, multiple home invasions that had been conducted sure. by these defendants. Uh, so we have to concentrate on, on who is sitting on these jurors, who's prosecuting these cases, who's defending these cases, and uh, you know, who's actually hearing these cases and passing sentences on uh, serious felonies like this, where these yeah. people, or person who's convicted of such serious crimes is uh, not able to have an opportunity to prey on the victimless. Sarah, um, part of the defense here, it seems, it, like, it seems like a conviction is inevitable. I think the defense may be trying to save the life of, of the accused correct. here. And part of the defense is, well, he was sexually abused as a boy. He later turned to self-mutilation mm -hmm. and drugs. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that correct. effective? I mean, to, to his lawyer's defense, uh, uh, you know, I think he's done a fine job presenting or trying to educate the jury by way of expert testimony as to this guy's background. I mean, under civil law, we've got the eggshell plaintiff and, and his whole gamut of uh, dysfunction and uh, disabilities, etc., that come with him. And I think in this case, it's a death case. So, you know, it's important for the jurors to know that this guy, he's a very troubled man. He comes from a long history of sexual and drug abuse. He self-mutilated. He had at least five head concussions where his cognitive uh, ability is is handicapped essentially so the the question then becomes you know how many concussions does it take to commit a heinous offense like this and how sure. many does it take to mitigate it you know mm -hmm. and uh... and this guy you know was presented i mean this is part of his defense that you know hayes did all of this and then the question becomes well, why did he not respond properly and why did he not untie these girls and save them from this arson and i think that's where the expert testimony is important uh, and i feel his defense attorney has done a decent job and trying to educate the jurors that you know this guy is not like you and i he doesn't respond that way in a new situation under under a lot of stress right. you know he's cognitively not normal obviously you know um, Arthur jurors typically in a death penalty phase of the trial once the conviction is had they have to weigh mitigating versus aggravating circumstances so these would be the mitigating circumstances concussions sex abuse <coughs> drug disabled addict uh, came from a bad but the aggravating circumstances are horrific I mean look, oh, yeah. I, I, I've said this about this case it doesn't really get worse than this. I mean, this is a horror movie. It's as bad Li as it gets. Literally, like when you go to the movies and you hear like a, when you want to watch a horrible movie, that this, these are the sets of circumstances. So it's very difficult for a criminal defense attorney. And I agree. At this point, they should be just trying to save his life. If you believe that being in right. a box for the rest of your life is a better punishment than giving a needle and quietly going off to wherever you're going to go to, but. Um, the aggravating, what the prosecutor said, maybe he closed the doors so he didn't have to hear the screams of the young girls. The, that's, the that's typical gripping. aggravating factors are known by the acronym HACK, uh, heinous, atrocious, and cruel. This is the quintessential oh. heinous, atrocious, and cruel, isn't it? Definitely. Uh, you know, they preyed on them. The sexual acts committed on the children in that home, the, the violence involved with this particular crime goes to a level where all of us, you know, find it horrific. Burning them to death. <laughs> there, I mean, it, there's nothing else that could be said. This is at the, at the top of, of the scale of uh, one of the worst cases. And the dad that lives. I mean, that, that's, that's, that almost is worse in a, in a weird way. Like, he's got to live with, me, with that anguish. It's. And he had been so awfully beaten with a baseball bat that he could barely move or think. He struggled to sort of get out of the house and get help, um, but it wasn't in time. Uh, all right. I'm sure the prosecutor is going to do a masterful job painting a picture of just what you said. The dad, uh -huh. and then how badly yeah. does a father and a husband want to help his wife and his daughters, and they had disabled him to such a point where he couldn't even... 
get to a telephone. All right, Sarah Zeri, who's an attorney in Los Angeles. Sarah, thanks for being with us. Thank you.